Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Pastor Washington. We are so thankful to be able to meet you on this medium. You know, we have been in the park a lot. And we said, uh, at some point, try to get back inside the church. But during this pandemic, since Ohio is at purple stage, we got to be very, very careful. And I love the church too much to put you at risk, particularly during this pandemic. So I have a little, uh, not a Jordan with me today, Minister Jordan with me. We was going over some things that we used to do over these 40 years, almost 40 years of pastoring. And since we cannot gather together, I want to look at some of our throwback uh, ministries back in the day when the church was together, we had communion and all of that. So I went back about seven years to see what we were like during that time when we all came together on one accord to worship God. It just so happened to be the time, I think you were still in college there, weren't you? Yeah, I was it's, still in college. I think I was about a senior in yeah. college at The Ohio State University. And what um, game was that? Do you it remember? Was, it was the day, this was the Sunday right after the big game against the team up north. Yeah, that's right, Michigan. You, you afraid to call their name? <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, you know how that goes. <laughs> Ohio State versus Michigan. <laughs> 2013, where we won 42 to 41. Right, One of the I mean, biggest, craziest games that we had against. Yes, and, and since he mentioned that, it just reminded me, I was so moved by that, that I preached a sermon that Sunday entitled, What Sports Fans Can Teach the Church. And so today, I want to go back and show you that tape, or that video, if you will, of uh, what happens when uh, people are so engaged in sports and love sports. But there's a lesson that we can learn from that. And I preached a sermon that day, what sports fans can teach the church. Now, I want you to know this too also while we are here, that we cannot wait to get back together and worship together. I wish we could tomorrow, but we cannot simply because of the fact that the pandemic is so far out of our reach. And you know, it's very dangerous today. Make sure you wear your mask, Practice social distancing, wash your hands, and be very careful where you go because this pandemic is a dangerous thing. I know, you know, we talk about, you know, and I trust in God, but listen, God gives us wisdom too, and we got to be very, very careful. We love you too much to put you at risk. I don't even go to the hospitals as much. I usually call. So as a result of that, we're using this mechanism and this medium until we can get those numbers down and we can come back and worship the, the Lord in spirit and truth. But I know he's excited about it because, uh, you know, he's over the youth and the youth are out there. They're not a part of us right now. And the, the mothers want to come to church and the choirs want to come back to church, but not yet. We just have to wait. Be wise as a serpent, but yet harmless as a dove is what the word of God says. So hopefully you will enjoy this message. From 2013, is it, Johnny? Yes, it is. And we're all the way back to 2013, and we're going to see how that message will resonate with you, why sports fans can teach the body of Christ some things. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you.
Are certainly thankful today for the one who has given his little life to Christ very respectful young man and we had an opportunity to talk to him in the back just for a few moments Kasim Deer Jr. is a young man that has unusual gifts he happens to be the grandson of a sister Mary Jo Nash amen I believe if he's here if you would come at this moment Kasi, look at him. I want you to know what the certificate says. Certificate of baptism, this certifies that Kasim, dear junior, and date of birth is January the 12th, 2002, was baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost and on this first day of December in the year of our Lord, done by the order of the Mount Hermon Missionary Baptist Church. Now, you are a part of the body of Christ. When is your birthday, your actual birthday? When were you born? January the 12th, 2002. This is another birthday. This is the day that you were born into the, the body of Christ, the day that you gave your life to Christ. This day will go down as a historical moment where you actually have represented the kingdom of God because, you know, Jesus was baptized. He was baptized by his cousin, John. And when he was baptized, same thing that happened today, the people witnessed heaven was open <coughs> And the Spirit of God descended in the form of a dove. And there was a voice like thunder that said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. All that was going on in the atmosphere that you cannot see. The angels was watching. They were rejoicing. Heaven is satisfied. And the devil is horrified for what you are about to do. Now on your journey, it would be some challenges. And you may not know all the words of God, you're a young man, but you're going to learn in Bible study and Sunday school that you will be able to defend your faith. You are a part of this body. And as a part of this body, I take great pleasure and honor and particularly humility to say to you that we are just as happy as we can be 
everybody in this church is happy because everyone that you see here has done exactly what you have done. I didn't do Brother Malcolm. The spirit was willing, but the flesh was weak. God bless you. Let's give him a rousing round of applause. Kasim Dear Jr. <laughs> Where's your dad? Dad, stand up. There's his dad. Stand up. It looks just the light. You don't have to go on, Murray. Just the light. God bless you. It's so amazing. It's so amazing. Your love for me. Your love for me. It's so amazing. It's so amazing. Your sacrifice for me. For every blessing. For every blessing. Give unto me. For every valley. love for me it's so amazing your sacrifice for me for every blessing give unto me for every valley
Amen. Let's give the choir a rousing round of applause and thank them that to remind us that we always stand amazed of his love, of his power, of his majesty. Oh, praise the Lord, everybody. Somebody said, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. But blind, but now I see. Let's just take a praise break right here. Take a praise break, you know, right here. Just start thanking him. He, he's worthy of all of our praise. Ah. Big glory. Just a moment to give him praise. You may not have this chance again. In all things, give thanks. For this is the will of God concerning you in Christ Jesus. And all things give thanks. Woo, glory. I might be sick, but I'm thinking about blessings and healing. Might be broke, but I'm thinking in advance, God's going to work it out. That's why I give thanks even with the meager things. Because little becomes much when you put it in the master's hand. I stand amazed at all he does because I know how to thank him in advance. We ought to be able to have an advance praise. That thing you've been petitioning God for in advance. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Thank you. God Almighty, thank you. You have your word of God, if you will. I want you to turn briefly with me to the Acts of the Apostle, chapter 26. Acts of the Apostle chapter 26 and I want to begin reading at verse 24. Well, let me read it, start at verse 19. Whereupon, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. For these cause the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continued unto this day witnessing both the small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets and Moses did say should come. That Christ should suffer and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. And as he thus spake for himself, Festus said uh, with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself. Much learning doth make thee mad. But he said, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth, of soberness. For the king knoweth of these things, but for whom also I spake freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him, for this thing was not done in a corner. King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. You may be seated. Yesterday, our city was almost shut down because of a game. People were at home. 
They were watching television, popcorn, food, and perhaps a little libations. <laughs> all of us were glued all day long. Joe, I went to the mall yesterday and it was like Death Valley days. Because we had this thing called football. It's amazing to me that in this text today, I want to talk about what sports fans can teach the church. What can sports fans teach the church? In this text, this great apostle Paul addresses, stand before King Agrippa as he uh, and Festus, the governors of the Caesar's court in terms of judgment. As Paul expounded upon preaching Christ, they, those two leaders had totally different responses and reactions to Paul's declaration about the scandal of the cross. Yes, sir. We read in short some of the things that he had to deal with even coming to those that knew that he was a Jew of Jew, that he was a Hebrew of Hebrew, and now has converted because he was a persecutor of the church and now they wanted to kill him. Agrippa said in verse 28, all this stuff that you've talked about, you almost convinced me and persuaded me to be a Christian. But Festus on the other hand said, hey man, all this learning has made you mad. And isn't that the way it is oftentimes with us who are in the body of Christ because we expound about the love of Christ that they think we are mad? Yes. Now I need you to understand that word mad literally comes from the word, the Greek word mania, which is a psychological word that means that somebody is beside themselves. This is the only time in the Bible that the word mania is mentioned or used. The word is used across the world as a psychological term. It means excessive excitability, a persistent obsessive enthusiasm. Mania. I think I'd have rolled that back around. Excessive excitability, persistence, obsessive enthusiasm. We saw that yesterday. We watched folk crazy going off. I watched my daughter and the sacred go crazy. Get a touchdown. He don't have the ball in his hand yet. Leave him alone. <laughs> But well, why are they hitting him? They're supposed to. All of that was going on in my family room. And they were excited. They were glued to the television. Paul uses this, this word in, in, in a way that it talks about our mental condition. How can we as Christians down through the ages be engaged like the sports fans? How can we be excited about what the Lord has done for us? Festus was simply saying, Paul, you are a fanatic. Yes, yes. And that's the same word that we get, fan. That's right. A fan. You are excessive about the things of Jesus Christ. You are overzealous, Paul. You are unreasonable. Fans is a short form of fanatic. I wonder if you know any fanatics around here. I believe we as Christians can learn much and a whole lot about these fanatics in our day. Sports fans. We all have our teams. Well, well what are some of the marks 
Bishop Tatum, what are some of the marks of these sports fans? First of all, they are faithful. They don't conform. They're faithful to their team. They like, they, they like to be identified with their teams. They have hats. They have shirts. They have socks. They even have underwear with the logo of their team. Preach, black boy. They don't mind being different. They wear the hats. They got the red mustaches. <laughs> they got the Batman cape. Y'all stay with me. I'm just saying what I'm saying. Go team, go. <laughs> Twerking. All of that. The twerk ministry. Y'all going to help me preach this thing. And they don't mind because they got, we representing. Have ever, all the paraphernalia. As a matter of fact, if my memory serves me right, Michael Jordan, you know, he played for North Carolina. He was Tar Heel. And it is alleged that he wore all the time while he played for the Chicago Bulls that he always wore his Tar Heel underwear. Because he said, once a Tar Heel, always a Tar Heel. That's excessive. But they buy and they are faithful to their team and they don't conform. That's what we can learn. Matter of fact, the Bible says, ye shall be my witnesses. That's what he says in the first part of this text. That's what we can learn if, if they can be fanatical and they are faithful to their team. Jesus tells them in Acts 1 and 8, you yes. shall be my witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and into all Judea and to all of the Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Yes, yes. Really? Where are our fanatics that are faithful and don't conform? Not only, you know, they are faithful and they don't conform, they are spenders and they don't withhold anything. Uh-oh, y'all got quiet. I'm going to rock your world in a minute. They are spenders. They have a reputation of spending money to support their team. Preach Reverend Washington. Fans order tickets well in advance. They getting ready for the, the, the bowl games. Buying tickets. Hotel reservations. They, they don't mind sacrificing for their team. Nothing is too expensive for their team. As long as their team is their team. Uh, I'm trying to get us to just give an offering every now and then. Our, our, our God, he won. Out there on Calvary, they thought they had him. And he got up one, one Sunday morning with all power. And whenever I hit it, I still get happy. Yes, go, Jesus, go. Yes. Go, Jesus, go. Yes. Beat him square, but beat him fair. Go, Jesus, go. <laughs> oh, because the fans can teach us something. Matter of fact, 2 Corinthians 8 says this. See that you abound in the grace also abounding in the grace also giving is actually giving means excessive of what is expected My Lord. giving in excess of what is expected Whew. they spend for their tea oh they plan to go some of y'all looking at me you're scraping it up now getting ready to go to Pasadena you think <laughs> yeah I am they are spenders for their team. Well, what else can you learn from them? They are tireless. They seem, seemingly don't get any rest. They're tireless. They will travel for hours to see their team on road games, no matter how far it is, 
whatever the weather is, there can be a tsunami. They're going to get to their team. They're going to be on the road. They, matter of fact, they join booster clubs to help their team win. Little leaguers, you know, the parents, they buy, the moms and dads, they will sell candy bars and peanut brittle. Wow, we can't even get a sacrificial offering. Shut up, Washington. Because they are not slouches as it relates to their team. They are tireless. They're always thinking about, how can we make them better? I saw on television, they was at the bars yelling. People, oh, I'm so happy they won, even if it's one point. They was going in. They were shouting. There was a wave going on in there. Because they don't mind having excessive praise. They don't mind being exuberant for their team. While I'm up here talking, you're trying to say, looking at me like, stop meddling, Reverend. Because that's where we are in our culture. Now examine the good words of many Christians. They are rarely recognized for the contributions that they make to the church. But there are those, what I call, show ponies. Uh -oh. <laughs> they only show up when it's convenient. And they want to show off. I hear Brother Tinker telling me in my ear about a show pony. You can dress them up, put them in the parade, and while in the parade, they'd hike up their tail, and you know what's left. In the middle of the parade. Y'all got that visual? Oh, don't act like you've never been to a parade, and your kids said, what was that? You got that? Fertilizer, that's what it is. Isn't it crazy? Because we are expected to do much better. They're tireless. They, they, are, they recognize that the team is, is the best thing that ever happened, and they will work tirelessly. But there are those that just want to be here to be praised. And you better not miss announcing their name when they've done something. Isn't the Bible clear when it says, do your arms in secret? And your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. That's why I don't like folk, you know. Well, you know, every church has their own personality. And I've been around, they come and, you know, come up and put this there and that there and all of that. But if you want to give me some, you know, just at the door, wrap it up in your hand. Because you already got your blessing when you want other folk to see what you do. Do your arms in secret. And your father who sees you in secret will reward you openly. And if you give somebody something, don't go around bragging about what I did for them. You just give it and shut up. It's too tired of people bragging. Yeah, I gave them that dress. Look at it. Don't look as good on her as they did on me, but she wearing it. So what? Give it to them in love. I don't want somebody to give me something got to brag about and tell the whole world. They never would have been there if I hadn't have done that for them. Oh, please. I feel like giving it back. But there are those that want that prime space. And they want all of the accolades in front of everybody. Well, unless I hold you too long since y'all look at me strange. What else can these sports fans teach us? Well, they are loyal. That's right. They don't switch. Mm -hmm. mm. They are not what we call bandwagon fans. They get on the bandwagon, Brother Rayford. These are those so-called fans who switch teams to another team when their team is not winning. That's what I love about Reverend Brown. I pray for him daily. He is a Pittsburgh Steelers fan. 
and I tell him I am a Browns fan, win, lose, or draw. I stick with my team. I'm loyal to my team. I don't switch. I wish I had a witness in here. They are with their team, win, lose, sink, or swim. They are loyal. Can I say this? It's a pity that in your life you've been a member of 13 churches. It's a shame. Going to every church. Maybe it's because you're trying to find a man or a woman, but that ain't helping nothing. You need to sit down somewhere because God has somebody for everybody. Uh-oh, I'm going over there because they got more men. What? They may not be all men either. I just thought I'd throw that out there. Sister Washington, pick your jaw up. She's a... <clears throat> no, we can't be gallivanting and switching teams. We have teams, all of our churches have folk, the revolving door. They get mad about something, they're gone. You don't leave your family because you had an issue. Family is family. My sister, I had six sisters and five brothers, and we fought like cats and dogs. But if you bother a Washington, you got to fight from the top to the bottom. And we didn't leave the family because there was food in that house. We didn't go. Fight all you want, you can fuss. My brother said, that belonged to me, right. Until he came back, when I came back from the army, and I was 6'3", and he was 5'11", I said, what? <laughs> Things change. My Lord. God is a God of progression. <laughs> no, you don't switch. You don't, we have a whole lot of has-beens that have been in auxiliaries that got out for some crazy reason. Isn't that crazy? Listen, the church will stop for Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It won't stop for you. You know why? Just mess up and die. The church will move right on. They'll have you stretched out right here, people talking about how natural you look. Talking about we get respectable service from Wayne T. Lee. Look at her. Don't she look natural? No, she don't. She's dead. You can put lipstick and rouge, a hat and all that stuff on them. Put Bible in their hands, they, uh, glasses on. Take the glasses off, you use them. What are they going to take them in the grave? You take their Bible, you read it, you ain't read it in years. Don't put any Bibles, I've already read that. People putting fruit loops and all that in the casket, stop. No. Embarrassing me. Get that Fruit Loops out of there. <laughs> Where's fair? I'm serious. They can teach us. They are loyal to their team. They don't switch. Matter of fact, they are passionate. They don't give up. True fans will never give up until the last second. We've come too far to throw in the towel. We've the Lord has been so good to us down through the years. Yes, you're going to have hiccups. Yes, you're going to have problems in the church. Every church has problems. Every family has problems. There's no such as a perfect marriage. If you're not saying it to one another, you're thinking it. In your mind, you say, you say praise the Lord, I just love you. And behind the back, ooh. Ooh, that old nature just dries up in you. I don't care how long y'all been married. The only reason you ain't fussing now, you forgot some stuff. <laughs> Your mind isn't as sharp as it used to be. But you know, brothers, women, they can remember way back and woo wee. Something you did on a date. You didn't open the door for me in 1947. What? All that kind of crazy stuff. They remember it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
And I'm looking at my wife. She's going down memory lane right now. <laughs> because we are passionate about what we do for Christ. I am. I'm very passionate. I'm going to stay with the Lord until I die. We sing that song, I will trust in the Lord. Then we say, I'm going to treat everybody right. What? Until I die. I'm going to stay on the battlefield until I die. That's the song we sing. Those are the songs of Zion. Those are songs that kept us when we can keep ourselves. They are passionate about their team. They don't give up. I watched them all the way to the end when there were seconds they was thinking we can make it you can make it poor Lesetra she didn't know their name she's a run boy <laughs> run guy going off because they are loyal and passionate about their team while I was out yesterday talk about how passionate I saw all the little boys and girls all of them in their scarlet and gray after the game was over, they was all in John Eagle with their gray, the scarlet and gray. They want everybody to know that they was a Buckeye. Yeah, yeah. When's the last time you said, I'm glad I'm a Mount Hermonite? Oh, When's the last time I'm glad to be in the service of the Lord? I'm glad to be a Christian. I'm glad that he knows me and I know him. We should be passionate about who we are. When is the last time you bragged on Jesus? How he brought you from a mighty long way. When is the last time you bragged and told somebody about he set, how he set you free? How he put his spirit in you and gave gifts to you so that you could do works for him? When is the last time? When is the last time you said all that I owe belongs to him? When is the last time that you said that this house that I'm living in, God gave it to me? This old raggedy car I'm driving, God provided it for me. These old crazy kids I have, God gave them to me. Yeah, they crazy, but they're mine. And you can sit there like you, you know, on your way to heaven. Anyhow, all of us need to always lift up Christ. You are techie, aren't you? You're sitting up texting while I'm preaching. Tell them what I'm preaching about. That's why we're getting all that... Texting. Give God glory. They can teach us a lot. I don't want any secular group out praising me about what God has done for me. Yes, I love the Buckeyes. Yes, I love you know, the other team, the Buckeyes basketball. Love them. But they can't do for me what the Lord has done for me. They just can't do it. Because God has been great to us. He has been better to us than we have been to ourselves. And you know, one of the things that I like about this text, since they are passionate and they don't give up, in John chapter 6, Jesus had been engaged in doing signs, Stephan, and wonders, and opening up blinded eyes, and bringing Lazarus out of a dead tomb. Anointing a blind man's, eye, blind man's eyes with spit and a spittle. They watched him do that, my brothers and sisters. They watched him feed a multitude and picked up the leftovers. They watched him. And this is Paul standing before Festus and Agrippa, telling him about the wonderful things that Christ has done. And when he got through in chapter 6 of John's gospel, they was following him. In the six, when he began to talk about commitment, drink of my blood, eat of my flesh. And some in the crowd said, this is a hard saying. Who could hear it? And the Bible says, Jesus watched them leave one by one and asked his disciples this question. Will ye go away? He watched them leave because he said something startling to them. You got to be committed. That's right, man. You got to be a Jesus fan. Yes, sir. 
you got to give up wrong for the right. Yes, sir. And at the risk of sounding redundant, I got to bring this up again because I, I was, it happened to me this morning, my brothers and sisters. I was on my way, and this car, <laughs> it did it again. He turned, had a, had a signal on for five and a half miles. And I watched. And it reminds me of some of us in the church. You said you're going to turn from wrong to right. But your blinker is still on. I'm watching you. Turn your blinker off. Because they walked away, Peter replied. And I think this ought to be our response when those that leave. The church, because of foolishness, something that small yes, sir. didn't mention my name. She said something about me. Lord Jesus. They don't like people that are different. Well, well, yeah. And they walk no more. Or because somebody just insulted them. Well, or maybe it's because we want to go to the next level, above and beyond. And because they're so cheap and stingy and don't want to leave anything behind for our coming generation, shame on us. And they rather close their wallets and leave. And when they get in trouble, the first person they call, moi, don't have no money to bury their loved ones. We do it. My pastor here don't bury people in the church, so maybe you can do it. He don't bury sinners. My Lord. Yes, sir. True. One of my best evangelistic tools is to bring folk that are unsaved into a saved house. Yes, and show them how we ought to behave. We are not Pharisees. Some of us are. Got the nerve because a girl had a baby out of wetlock and want to have her come and beg pardon in front of the church. Where's the man? Had the baby said, don't bring that baby and bless her in the church. It's not the baby's fault. All that legalistic stuff and you got 15 kids out of wedlock. Shut up. At least they're honest. I'm just saying what I'm saying. That's what sports fans can teach us. Matter of fact, they have tailgate parties. And they but hey, I, they don't know them. Hey, how you doing? Come over and have a bud. But when we come together, we got attitudes. Our facial features look like you getting on my nerves. What's wrong with being nice? I, they don't know each other. Hey, we out of Bud Light, but we got some Bud Heavy over here. They do that. They barbecuing. And if you don't eat meat, hey, we vegetarians come over here. All of that outside of the church. Many of us got more than we could ever eat and enjoy, but because we are selfish. I want to thank the deacons and those who participated during Thanksgiving. That was a miracle. We didn't have a lot of money. We didn't have a lot of resources, but God proved to us that little becomes much. And we had so much that we even have leftovers. That's what God will do. I watched it with my own eyes. That's what they can teach us. They give. They spin. They look out for one another. And if they don't have a shirt, they got an extra one, they give it to them. Wow. Some of us got more than we can ever desire. 
Where can we go? They should be a no going back generation. That's what we need. How many people you know that just went back? They sick of church. Maybe it's because they're sick of you. These religious idiots that just sit there and think they got it. For real, mess up and die. You're going to find that person in the street will be there before you get there. Don't fool yourself. Don't be fooled at what people that think they got it. There's a song called Great Pretender. And the Lord will rip the covers off of them and show them for their pernicious ways. I have to admit that my life is an open book. I want it to be open. One of the things about being a Christian, you have to show what Christ has done to a sinner and that you could be next on the agenda. Where can we go? We can't go anywhere. That was the reply, the reply, re reply of, of Peter. Who can we go? Who can we go? You have the word of truth. You have the word of God. And lastly, Paul stood before Festus and, and he was ridiculed for his faith. I, if you have not been ridiculed about your standing in Christ, something is wrong. Why you got to go to church? Because I have to. Because at the cross, at the cross when I first saw the light, I heard them sing that song and the burdens of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith. I received my sight. And now I'm happy all the day. Why you go to church? Because the Lord has blessed me and I want to bless him back. I want to let him know that I appreciate what he's done for me. It may not be a whole lot. I appreciate everything he's done for me. Everything. The little nuggets that I have. The little old house that I live in. That little house on the prayer is mine. That's what sports fans. And even if we lose every now and then, we're still for our team. Can I suggest to you as I close this little introduction, this world is not a friend to grace. It does not comprehend true faith, but this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. <laughs> I said this joy I have, the world didn't give it. And the world can't take it away. This love I had, the world didn't give it to me. This world, I, this love I had, the world didn't give it, and it sure enough can't take it away. And here we are on the day after with a fanatical hangover. And here we are today praising God for what he has already done. That's why we don't have to wait for a touchdown. That's why we don't have to wait for the last minute. That's why we don't have to wait for a running back. Because we already know the battle is over. Do I have a witness in the house? You, you don't have to wait till the battle is over. You can shout now because you already know who's going to win. Because one of these old days, the Lord is going to come back for his team. And I wonder how many of us will be ready to go into the locker room. And when we hear him say, well done, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And we'll get a pair of gold pants. I wish I had a witness in here. I know some want the gold pants. But when I get there, oh, hallelujah. He's going to give me a new robe. Hallelujah. A robe that has been washed in the blood of the Lamb. If you miss me in the robe shop, come on up a little higher. You'll find me putting on my new shoes. In the shoe shop, 
If you miss me in the shoe shop and in the robe shop, come on up a little higher. I will be putting on my new hat, which is called a crown that fadeth not away. Anybody here is waiting to be crowned. Anybody here waiting to say for the Lord to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things and you come on up, I'll make you ruler over many. Hey, troubles of this world will be over. We don't have to worry about stumbling any longer. We don't have to worry about backbiters anymore. We don't have to worry about troubles any longer. Because when we see Jesus, I'm going to say amen. I usually close out in a funeral home succession. I always say I'll be all right if the sun don't shine and the wind don't blow. As long as Jesus is my pilot, I will be all right. Anybody here that you know that you'll be all right if you put your hand in the hands of Jesus, you'll be all right. Lead me on, thou great Jehovah. Have I got a witness in the house? And then we stop every now and then and say, can't nobody do me like Jesus? Can't nobody do me like the Lord? Pick me up. Turn me around. Gave me a praise in my heart. Isn't he all right? If you know he's all right, just wave your hand and say glory. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. I feel better since I laid my burdens down. I feel so much better since I laid my burdens down. I used to hear old Deacon Mitchell say, friends don't treat me like they used to since I laid my burdens down. Jordan, what do you think? Wow, Bishop, that <laughs> was a word. What a word. Oh, man, I learned so much from sports fans. Yeah. You know, they're faithful <laughs> to their team. They're loyal to their team. They're ready to spend their yeah. team. It's been and a lot of money. Right. And right now is the time that we really have to be faithful. Yeah. Even in season and out of season, we've got to be ready. And we've got to be looking and hear from the Word of God and continue to do God's will. Even though we're outside of the church building, we're still part of the church. We're still part of the body of Christ. So we've got to do our part. We've got to adjust. Even in this season of the pandemic. Isn't it amazing that not only did they uh, were loyal to their team and they the spent for people, they traveled. Mm -hmm. They didn't Man. care how much. I know some folks that buy tickets in advance and pay three and four or five hundred dollars more than that wow. yeah. just to travel <laughs> one way. That's and, true. Uh, but, you know, if we used to be like that in the church. Mm -hmm. Whenever we was going somewhere, we had this fellowship. The church would travel with the team. And mm -hmm. when we got there, uh, uh, we would spend, we would make sure that whatever we did for that church, mm -hmm. we did it for them. We didn't do it for our own aggrandizement. So we're yeah. trying to get back to some normalcy. So I hope that helps the people out there that have heard this message today that you uh, understand that we can learn things from a lot of people. Oh, yeah. What do you and, think? Oh, yeah, Bishop. You're absolutely right about that. And just like us as sports fans, it's how faithful we are to our team. Even when we're down and it looks like we're losing, mm -hmm. we've got faith that we are going to win. Oh, and us as a church have to understand because we have God's hand over our lives, we are going to win, even in this season of 2020. So I hope everybody out there is staying faithful. Right. We also got to be able to spend for our team. Right. So share this message. Share it with you, uh, your people on Facebook Live. Share it on YouTube. And also... Feel free to go ahead and spend and tithe and offerings. Ooh, what you say? Yeah. yeah. You got to tithe around. and offerings in a yeah. pandemic? <laughs> yes. Oh, all right. Still in the pandemic. Well, how, did they, how can they um, benefit the church in terms of 
from a fiduciary perspective. Well, they, there are different ways. Yeah, you know? so many different ways that they can spend. Exactly. Right now, we have Cash App. Well, um, you can find us at dollar sign Mount Herman C, or you can go to Givelify. Find us under Mount Herman Missionary Baptist Church, 2283 Sunbury Road, or you can meet us here at around 1230 right. from 1230 to 1, and we'll be here to take your tithes and offering. Absolutely. We thank God for you because even during the pandemic, Mount Herman, you have showed yourself faithful. We really appreciate all of your offerings and people stop by and mm -hmm. throughout the course of the week. So I'm sending through giving the five, but we are so grateful because even during this pandemic, the Lord has prepared us and provided for us. And I want to thank you publicly and personally for your seeds and your offerings that you continue to send to the church because we could not make it unless the Lord was working through you. So God bless you. You may have a spot. Tell why don't you just end this uh, with a word of prayer. And we're touching the green that uh, God is going to bless us during this pandemic. Sure. All right. Bow your heads, everybody, and close your eyes. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for watching over us, even amidst this season. Lord, we know that it's just that. It's just thank a season, you, and this too shall pass. We thank you for everybody that's out there listening and watching right now, God. There's somebody out there that needs you right now in this moment. Lord, I'm asking that you touch them, touch their hearts and touch their minds, touch their families, Lord. Put a hedge of protection around their families. Oh, yes. and I'm asking that you give them healing and you give them peace and you give them joy, even in this season. Lord, knowing that in the next season, you're going to uh, do something so big to blow their minds. Yes, yes. And now I know this right now, God, that you are doing it and you're making ways even right now. For eyes haven't seen and ears haven't heard nor has it entered to the hearts of man what you are doing and what you are preparing for us, Lord. So we thank you right thank now you, for our church family. We thank you for those that are out there listening on Facebook Live, and we thank you and we give you honor and praise and glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Jesus, Amen. Amen. See you next week. The Lord say so. For the bread and the wine, we thank you because the bread represents your broken body that you sacrificed for our success in life, that you have given us an example of what it means for sacrifice. You didn't have to do it, but you did. Yes, thank you, you loved us so much that you bared all the pain, discouraging the crown of thorns. Your body was battered. But the blood Oh, the blood that reaches the highest mountain, that flows to the lowest valley. That blood that gives us strength from day to day. You gave not only your body, but your blood. What can make us holy? Says not only your body, but your blood. As we commune together, let us remember let us not eat unworthily. Because if we eat and drink unworthily, we eat and drink of damnation to our own souls. So let us examine ourselves and ask the Lord to forgive us of our sins of omission as well as our sins of commission. And let us eat. For he is a God of the second chance. And a second chance, and another chance, and another chance, and another chance. He will look beyond your faults and see your names. God forgive us of all of our transgressions, our iniquities, and our sins. That we now can come boldly and we can remember your death until you come. It is in Jesus' name we pray. As Minister Brown will come and he will deal with the host of bread and Johnny, Minister Johnny Joy will come, dear Lord, discerning the blood. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. And on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it. He said, This Bread represents my body, which is broken for you. Yeah. This do in remembrance of me. May we all eat together.
like manner when he had supped, he took the cup, saying, This is the cup of the New Testament in my blood. So often as he drink, do this in remembrance of me. May we all drink together. And they sang hymns on the Mount of Olives. 